Hi, my name is Kathy Skaggs. We're going to be doing a series of um, weekly live live streams about working with clay in your classroom. And what we're going to do is start with one of my most favorite things, which is printmaking. It's fun and you'll love it. And what I think is great about it is if you have not taught clay before and you are trying to figure out how to teach clay, but you are a painter or a printmaker, this is a great transition. So if you paint, draw, print, make, you now are a ceramic person that can now do those things onto clay. I'm gonna go over how to do the inks today and I'm gonna do just a little simple printing to get us started. And we're gonna do a whole series of all different kinds of printmaking on clay. We're gonna use velvet underglaze. Basically, what is an underglaze? The main thing you need to know is there's no glaze component in this. So it's basically what I always consider a clay-based colorant. One of the great things about it is the color that is in the jar is the color that you're gonna get for the most part when things are fired. Now ceramics is different than painting and drawing, but for the most part, you will get this color. The other thing I like about them is they mix kind of like paints. So I buy, uh, when I was teaching, I couldn't afford all these wonderful, wonderful underglaze colors. So what I did is I bought all the dark colors, a lot of white, a lot of yellow, and I mixed, mixed a lot of my colors and it saved me a ton. The other thing is they have this very, very wide working window. So they, you can put them on when clay is moist, wet, you can put it on bone dry, I mean, you know, leather hard, bone dry, and even bis. You have to adjust it a little bit when you're doing that because when you're putting under glaze on a moist clay, it's like a sponge full of water. There's no absorbency. It doesn't want to take it in. So you need to have a pretty thick under glaze. If you're working on bone dry or bisque, it's real absorbent. It wants to draw in all that moisture. So you sometimes want to make it, uh, water it down just a little bit. Let's talk about making ink. I went to the Dollar Tree and I bought these pie pans. And in these pie pans, I put all these fabulous underglaze colors. I live in Florida. It's very, very humid. So it takes it a while to dry out. Sometimes I buy bigger pans. How much ink will you get out of a pint? You will get a jar about this size, eight ounces. This is 16 ounces. So you'll get half as much because basically you're letting the water evaporate out. At first when I did this, I'm like, eee, now I only have like a smaller amount, but you use so much less. When I come out into the studio, I always kind of stir it up and I make sure that it kind of wants to build the skin on the top. So I'm gonna stir it so that it doesn't get that skin until I get something that looks like that or even like this. So it's basically creamy and um, you want it the consistency, depending on what you're doing. If you're silk screening, you want it like a silk screen ink. If you're block printing, you want it more pasty and thick. So you'll let it sit out a little longer. What happens if, oh my gosh, you forget and you let it sit out too long? No problem add a little bit of water in it and it's fine. Now I will take them and I'll scoop them and put them in a jar and I keep them for a long time. I use a lot of black, it's so versatile. If you're just getting started and you don't know what color to go with, go with something dark, number one, and black is to me the best. So now I've got all these ready and now I'm ready to put them in a jar. You don't need to add anything you just need to let it dry out. Now, I silk screen a lot with them and you can also block print. Any printmaking you're already doing, so if you're doing softy cuts, if you're doing uh, gel jelly prints, if you're doing linoleum prints, if you're doing styrofoam prints, you can use them just the same way. If you're doing printmaking, say with a brayer, and you can roll this and you basically want to set it up just like you do printmaking. 
can let it get as thick and as pasty. Now you want to limit how much kids can roll on here because you can overdo it just like you can in any printmaking method. But what I love about this, I will do a lot of mixing with my colors so that I get different colors when I go to print. I use them just like printmaking inks and they, they're beautiful. We're gonna print with some craft foam. I do get, use the sticky back craft foam. Uh, basically this craft foam prints great. I mean, and you can print one of two ways. You can print onto the clay, you can print onto paper and transfer it. So I'm gonna do both here. I did a couple of these little squares and the project that we did was called Positive and Negative Space. Look how beautiful those cuts are. Now, do you really think I took an X-Acto knife and cut those today for you? Not that I wouldn't have loved to. I used my Cameo Silhouette die cut machine. But what you would do with students is they can either cut the craft foam with an X-Acto knife. You might want to do to change the project is to just use some scissors and cut the craft foam up. What I would suggest is to cut a backing piece, but this is a little bit thin. So what I do is I sometimes stack it on top of each other. So that's what I did here. It makes it basically a little bit, a little bit thicker. I would always have kids do a lot with shapes instead of trying to make images. If you have kids just cut shapes and then stick them down, you can talk about repetition, you can talk about patterning, you can talk about motif, you can talk about a ton of things. These are thicker, you know, because again, I've used two of them. So I would just fill this up. What you want to do though is notice like on here, I would be sticking um, lots of triangles around here because if I go to ink it up, I don't want that brayer, when I go to ink it up, if I'm gonna ink it up this way, I don't want it to print all that background. So if you put lots of pieces with some space between, those will print the best. So you can either ink those up with a brayer, but for kids, I think it's kind of easier to ink them up with a sponge. Now I have a bis tile and I have these great colors, but sometimes what I like to do is to, I like to really use a really wet brush, especially if I'm working on um, a bis tile, cause you know, it's so absorbent. I mean, it is like you can see, really takes in that color. The beauty of underglazes is if you don't have time to put it on leather hard, you can also put it on when it's bisque or wet or however you're gonna use it. So there's a, a wide working window. Now, the only thing I would suggest is don't gob it on bisque. Don't put it on bisque and really gob it on there. But with pale colors, I think you're gonna be fine. Black underglaze. If you don't have one thing in your whole classroom or studio, you've got to have some black underglaze. We're gonna just put a little bit on a sponge here. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna kind of work it into the sponge. Now, the thing you wanna do is like a little kitty cat, get them to really tappity tap, walk all over that. Oh, I love printmaking with craft foam. It is beyond great. I am using right now this newsprint. It's Strathmore. I would use whatever you have. The benefit of this for printing is that it's rugged.
One thing that you can do is to print either directly on the clay or you can print on newsprint and then print from this. What's the advantage there? The advantage is you can print and print and print and print and chop the paper up. You can leave it for a week, a month. You can, you, there's no time limit. You can get all your printmaking done and then take this and transfer it to clay. Another thing that's great with these craft foam stamps is you can ink them up. I'm not going to take the time to ink this one up. Now this was just the residue ink that I had, but I pressed it. This is a very, very soft piece of clay. So I can print on it soft. I can print on it leather hard. This is Excuse me, but this is one of the best things you'll ever find, especially for young kids, older kids too. Taking a jar, like this little underglaze jar, and put the sticky back foam onto the jar lid. So now it gives a rigid, something that those kids can hang on to, or they can hold on to the whole bottle, put the craft foam, and just stamp it on to the clay or the paper. So these colors, but what's good with this, and this you can see I just cut it with my scissors. I, you know, when I taught, and I taught for many years, I never did stamps for kids. I, they I did one earlier today, just messing around, oh, and I overlap colors. This is totally dry. Now it's ready to transfer. Which, as you can see, underglazes, and what you, when you make your underglaze ink, you will be able to use it in so many different ways. I'm going to show you next week how to work with Easy Screen. عالم الهوايات بأسعار الجملة تشتري خامات مضمونة ومواصفات عالمية